Linux Zen custom kernels. Are they worth your time? Or are they just a waste of time? Coming up. This video is brought to you by ChrisTitus.com. Be sure to check there for any how-to guides or walkthroughs for a lot of my videos. And also I send out a, a newsletter dictating kind of all the things that have been going on, both not just YouTube, but all across all the platforms I cover. So definitely go there, sign up for the newsletter, or at the very least, check out the articles that uh, relate to the videos that I make. So let's get down to it. I've done custom kernels and I gotta say it's one of those things that I like doing but I'm not sure how much performance increase I get. Like is it extremely noticeable? And the answer to this question is no. It's not extremely noticeable. However, it makes me feel good by doing it. I really, really enjoy it. So with that, I'm going to show you how to do a custom Linux kernel. Now, is this worth doing? Do I recommend most people doing this? Not really. But if you're gaming a whole bunch on your Linux machine and you really want to squeeze every single ounce of performance out of it, maybe this kernel's for you. Now, real world examples. Do I see more FPS? Do I see more performance when I use this kernel? And the short answer to this is no. Not really. Uh, however, I do feel like I get a little bit of a performance bump, but it's not very noticeable. So this is really for the hobbyist, the person that really wants to tinker, and that's me for sure. I, I love tinkering, as you know, uh, if you've watched any of my past videos. So with all that, let's jump on the desktop and, and let's go ahead and install it on Arch. Now, if you're going to install it on a Debian-based machine, which is probably most of the viewers out there, uh, it's very simple. Click the link in the description. Uh, I made an article on ChrisTitus.com. You can follow that easily go through it or go to the official website uh, for the licorice kernel or licorix kernel and uh, you'll easily be able to copy paste a couple commands and be off and going on that kernel for for this custom kernel meant for gaming workloads and, and desktop workloads so with all that let's go over the desktop and check this out Okay, so we finally finished this build. Uh, now, I wanted to go ahead and say this is kind of going from the end and working back. I wanted to show you what it's like to do a custom kernel on Arch, but at the same time, I didn't want you to sit there and watch me build a kernel for an entire hour. So basically what I've done is run this command right here, yay, which is my actual thing to access the AUR, Linux dash LQX. This is for the kernel. This took me about an hour to finish running. Now this is optimizing my make package, so it utilizes all 16 threads of my 2700 Ryzen chip, which is an extremely beefy computer. So uh, if you're running like a quad core, expect this command to run for about three hours on an Arch-based system. So uh, don't just run this all willy-nilly thinking it's gonna just build all the same thing. And then the same, token, make sure that, uh, you know, you really want to do this. Now, uh, this built and it built pretty quickly in the respect of building a Linux kernel. But again, it took a while. So uh, with this built, I'm going to reboot this machine and uh, I'll go ahead and play a little bit of this uh, build process just so you can kind of see uh, the hour long process. But uh, I want to flash forward and just do like 30 seconds of a snapshot. Here I am installing the Licorix kernel here. And uh, I gotta say, even with 16 threads, this is taking a very long time. So don't feel like you're missing out by not seeing this entire process. I am obviously modified my Arch instance to utilize all 16 threads on my CPU because it is a, a workhorse. So when you go to install this, please note, it's going to take a while on an Arch-based system because these are not binaries. It is actually compiling and building it. 
right in front of your eyes. So when you go to do this, no, it's going to take a while. So with this being built, let's go ahead and reboot our computer and let's see what it's like to be on this newer custom kernel. All right, I can tell already we're on a new kernel. Um, in the bottom right, it's in 5.2.17, but let's go ahead and launch terminal here and we'll do a uname dash sr and uh yeah it took totally <laughs> it totally rebooted on me so i had problems with the 5.2.17 uh from the official one and still having problems even on a custom kernel so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave this video as is because honestly, this tech custom kernel should work just fine. But uh, with all that said, let's go ahead. I'm going to hard reboot this sucker and, uh, well, we'll uh, uninstall this and go back to our old kernel because, you know, seeing failure is also a good thing to learn. Um, not to bash this custom kernel because honestly, 5.2, the official vanilla one, I was having problems with. So not to be unexpected on this one. So I didn't actually have a boot menu there. Manjaro still skipped it. Um, it could be like system D boot or something like that. But uh, there's there's better ways to get around this. But we're going to see if we can't get around it in the GUI. If we can't, we'll drop the TTY and have to manually edit, which I really don't want to do. So we're going to try and just hit into Grub Customizer, switch this around real fast for us. So uh, first things first, we'll put it back to the... 5.1.21 save that go back to list configuration and i'm just going to edit this grab these bottom two lines to force the 5.21 we'll go ahead put that right here all right so we've already updated the config everything looks good now you notice my grub builds really quick and that's because i'm not doing the look for other operating system or os prober as uh, the package is called so with this we're going to go ahead and reboot and when we boot back in it should say 5.1 we're going to revert back to our, our old kernel uh, real fast but uh, i at least wanted to kind of show a custom kernel build most systems won't have this problem i i stand by the fact you should be able to easily go ahead and get in here and uh, uh use a custom kernel on most machines my specific machine back there is just having a lot of problems in 5.2 so with that, we're going to boot back into 5.1. Hopefully this took and uh, everything will be right with the world. Now, if you're on a Debian-based machine, please note, again, most of this will be pretty darn easy and pretty straightforward for you. Uh, Debian is a little more stable, obviously, than Arch. Uh, but with that, uh, you know, hey, mileage will vary. Don't hold me accountable. This is still obviously an experimental type kernel. Uh, that should give you a little extra performance. Now, here we are. I can already tell I'm on 5.21 down here, uh, 5.1.21. So I'm going to go ahead and end this section here. I just want to show an Arch-based custom kernel install. This specific one uh, wasn't necessarily a failure. Uh, it just... 5.2 just does not work well with my system config on this uh, studio PC. Now, the inside machine probably works just fine, um, but... With that, if you're on a Debian Mace machine, you're going to do a complete different process. You're not going to have to build the kernel like I did in Arch. But with that said, uh, you know, this is uh, basically using a custom kernel. Sometimes you're going to run into problems like this. Even on a Debian based system, I had issues uh, on my inside machine where I was going ahead and pinning that package. Now, uh, what I could do is install a custom kernel or build a custom kernel for 5.1 uh, to give me that performance boost instead of doing the 5.2. Uh, so that's possible. Also, if you're on a Debian based system, since you have the straight binaries, you don't need to build it and you can actually do, uh, using like aptitude, you could actually search for the 5.1 package and then install that directly on this machine here. So that is an also a good package, but just make sure you pin that kernel. If you're having problems with the latest and greatest, uh, that way you're not constantly upgrading to it and then going, Oh crap, my system's rebooting or freezing, uh, because that's obviously no good. 
So there you have it. That is the custom kernels in Linux. Again, I don't recommend this for most folks, but if you really want to tinker and squeeze all the performance you possibly can out of your system, by all means, do this. However, I find when I find a really good kernel like this, I really like to just put a hold on it. So if you're, I'm on a Debian based system, I'll do like APT hold or uh, aptitude hold and, and hold that package directly in place so it doesn't constantly update because uh, whenever you get to the end of a subversion, like let's say it's like 5.3.19 or 10 or something like that, and it's about to have switch over to the RC or the brand new 5.4 kernel. I like to stay on 5.3 a little bit longer. It seems a lot more stable and those types of things. So be wary of being always on the bleeding edge. I like to lag just a hair behind uh, because I find that's a lot safer, uh, especially for my personal experiences. I've known that going on the bleeding edge has caused me some heartache. So know that up front when you do something like this, know how to hold and pin packages, very important, but Overall, I still love this. I, I love the Zen kernel. I, I love everything about it, but I do understand it only appeals to a, a small percentage of the population out there. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next video.